In this video, we're doing something completely different. We're looking at 30 days lost in space from Inventor.io. It's an Arduino based electronics experiment kit, a bit of programming thrown in. The premise of the scenario is that your spaceship has crashed on an alien planet and sunk to the bottom of an ocean. And your job is to repair your ship and get it back to Earth. This task is divided into 30 days of activities, each designed to simulate you repairing another piece of your spaceship. And we're going to go through all 30 days uh, so you can get a really good idea of how the whole scenario works. And because it's so long, we're going to divide this up into videos of five days at a time. So this will take place over six videos and then we'll do a review right at the end. So in this first video, we'll look at setting up the Arduino and getting ready to program. And we'll look at the components and we'll run the first five days of experiments. So let's get started. Inside the kit, we have a handy URL that takes us immediately to the website that's going to walk us through every step. There is no instruction manual in this, and nor does it need one. Let's look at the components. We have the little Arduino board itself, which in this case is called a Hero Board, branded by Inventor.io. keypad, a seven segment display, an LCD display, header block, USB cable, jumper cables for the breadboard, there's male to female and male to male, a bag of multicolored LEDs, a little buzzer, uh, a dip switch, A variable resistor, potentiometer. Resistors. And a little mini breadboard. The first thing we do is create an account it's not immediately clear after that exactly where you go. It doesn't direct you. But if you go to courses, you can select the 30 days lost in space course. And then you end up with a list of all the days lessons. And you can start at the top with welcome to a strange new world. Greetings. I'm speaking to you from Rescue Shuttle Control. You have triggered an automated rescue protocol on this emergency ship, which will attempt to guide you through the process of activating and flying this rescue craft. Every day's lesson begins with this incoming broadcast. It gives full instructions for the day's lesson and the instructions are very well put together. For example, in day one, it explains how to connect your hero board to your computer and verify that it's working. 
and this includes a video for Windows installation and also Mac and Chromebook installation. That's a very welcome addition. The problem I have with the instruction video is not the quality of the instructions, but the way that it's presented. The actor is very wooden and the dialogue very artificial, almost cheesy. They could have used a good author to put together believable dialogue. Also, the screen layout looks like a game out of the 1980s. They could have used some really decent high-res graphics here that may be animated and looked like it really was a computer screen. So the instructions run through how to download and set up the Arduino program, which controls the Hero Board. And by default, it comes up with a blank, blank program which the instructor is explaining here. And this gives you the basis of every program that's written in Arduino. There's a piece of code that's run on setup when you start or reset the device, and a piece of code that's run continuously on a loop. And for this example, he's using a program that's supplied with the Arduino app itself it sets up one of the built-in LEDs on the board and simply flashes it by turning the voltage high and low. The video then walks you through how to connect to the board via USB and how to download your code and run it. So it's an extremely detailed introduction to setting up an Arduino. Very well done. So the USB cable is connected to the computer and you can immediately see that the power LED goes on and you can see that the blink program is flashing the LED on and off. So that's it for day one. We've successfully connected to the Arduino and we have a program running. Not too exciting so far, but we have to start somewhere. Let's move on to day two. In day two, we're simulating turning on the lights in the spaceship by activating an LED from the hero board. Here you can see the presenter spends a lot of his time reading from a script or looking off camera. Ideally, he would have been using a teleprompter so that the video is more engaging with the presenter looking directly at the camera, just as if he was communicating via a message. From an instruction point of view, the videos are very useful. They walk through the components and give you a very clear explanation of how to construct the circuit for this day's activity. You can also see that below the video, there's a handy diagram of how to connect the hero board to the components on the breadboard. It should be very clear how to wire up the circuit in each day's activity. Here's the components we need for day two. Breadboard, hero board, 220 ohm resistor, LED, and two leads. Here's the circuit before we run the program. Plus five volts is connected to one side of a 220 ohm resistor into the LED and then back via ground to the hero board. Here's the program for day two. On setup, when the hero is started, it turns the LED off by sending it a low voltage, zero volts. Then in the loop, it will wait a couple of seconds, delay 2000, and then turn the pin that the LED is connected to high, which will make the LED illuminate. Then it'll wait a short period, loop back and set it low, turning the LED off. So in the loop, it turns the LED off and on, off and on, off and on. This is a foundational skill for programming the pins on the hero board directly. And now we're going to upload it to the hero board. And here you can see after the program is downloaded, it's flashing the LED on and off with the periods that we programmed. Two seconds off and a quick flash on. The scenario between day three 
is that we need to conserve our battery levels and therefore we need a way to turn the light on and off on demand. The videos for each day's lesson are incredibly detailed, each running about half an hour long. The presenter walks through and explains all the code and the circuit and there's some very handy diagrams like this example where he's explaining the switch logic. Here's the code for day three. We're defining the LED on pin 12 of the Arduino and the switch or at least the first position of the three-way switch on pin 2 of the Arduino. The setup code is basically saying the LED is an output and the switch is an input. And then within the loop, it's testing the voltage level of the switch. If the switch is turned on, it goes to five volts and therefore it's high. And so it turns the LED to high, which is on. If the switch is off, then it's pulled to ground via the resistor. And so it writes a low or zero volts to the LED, which keeps the LED off. And now we're going to download the program to the Arduino board. Here the circuit has been built the same as in the diagram, and the program has been downloaded to the Hero board. The LED starts off because the switch is off. When we turn the switch on, the LED goes on. Turn the switch off. LED goes off. Very, very simple example of a switch routing the power to the LED. Let's move on to day four. Day four expands upon what we learned in the previous day. This time, instead of a switch switching off one LED, one circuit, we're basically going to use all three parts of the dip switch to control three different circuits. The premise is that we want to be able to better control power management in our spaceship. The code is very similar to before, except that this time we're using pins 10, 11 and 12 to power the LEDs, and we're using pins 2, 3 and 4 to be the switch inputs. And here's the constructed circuit with the program downloaded. We have three LEDs and a bank of three switches. So switch three controls the red LED. Switch two controls the blue LED. And switch one controls the green LED. and we have total control over which circuit we want on, say green or red. Or simply blue. If you're liking the content of this video about 30 days lost in space, please subscribe and like the video and look out for the next video in the series. Day five turns out to be different. It's called a creative day. And apparently every fifth day in the course will be a creative day. The instructor is encouraging all students to think about what they've learned in the course so far and to work on their own project. He also encourages students to share that project with the Facebook group. It's a great idea encouraging students to share their project with others and maybe to collaborate on something really interesting. So that's the first five days of the 30 days lost in space kit. Thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video which will be day six through day ten.